hopefully won't happen. Uh, and I should be available after class, on and off. Um, sometimes I have to run, pick up my kids. But uh, if I'm here, then you know you can come, stop by, uh, we can chat. Um, also, I mentioned uh, there's a model tutor available pretty much every day of the week, uh, Terry Spence uh, in the MLC. So that would be um, helpful. Let me uh, mention I still left uh, this first chapter uh, homework due on Wednesday. But uh, for those of you that kind of uh, still get um, you know warmed up with uh, programming and stuff, um, you know, I can pay, I can uh, take homework say by the end of the week if you if you still need a little bit of extra time. But typically, I'd like to um, keep this you know at a pace where we can move forward. Um, so anyway, if you need a little bit of extra time uh, uh, for the first assignment, uh, we can I, uh, you know uh, turn it to me or to my office by Friday. Um, Chapter two homework, I pushed it back to next Wednesday, so. Um, all right, so let's see. Um, I'll get started. Any questions from the little thing we talked about last time? Uh, yeah, I should have mentioned that I, I'm posting um, the notes here so you can, most of the time I'm not gonna add anything but Ah, um, so if you go there, then you're going to see the notes. Uh, sometimes I add a little bit of a wording to the end, but basically I've just added um, a few comments about you know the um, features of MATLAB that I showed you know yesterday in class, <coughs> last time in class. I felt like yesterday, my gosh. Um, okay, so let's see. I'd like to start talking about. Um, the first, if you want, uh, op optimization problem, so one-dimensional optimization, um, and along the way, introduce what's what's known as um, you know the process of, of math modeling, the five-step method. Um, so, let me see. Okay, so we're going to start by 1D optimization problem. Why is my cursor win? <laughs> okay, we'll see. Hopefully it's going to work. Um, so, and I'll, I'm going to leave this here, space here for What I call a five, uh, what we call a five-step method. For works pretty kind of uh, pretty general for you know um, setting up a pro you know you have some sort of um, physical you know some sort of application that you want to develop a mathematical model uh, and a property mathematical model solve it. Uh, draw conclusions, and we're going to kind of identify the five, you know, five steps for each of those. But um, so the, for the first example, we're going to talk about. I'm going to label the same in the book. So this is called a peak farm problem. And um, probably many of you have already looked at it. So uh, I'll just say. Briefly, that you know, um, in several, um, I mean, in in, a, in an economy like the U.S., there are lots of things that um, need to be optimized, um, and you would be surprised how diverse this um, type of problems you might encounter. So, if you're in an agriculture, uh, mass agriculture, or something, you know, you want to do some. Um, not just raise one pig, but you want to raise uh, lots of, you know, lots of uh, livestock um, for sale or for, you know, for meat or for whatever uh, purposes. Then you want to, you know, um, you're going to encounter some costs, and you're going to 
hopefully get some revenue. So you'd like to optimize some sort of, say in this case, a profit. But um, the profit will depend on, I mean, the profit, the revenue, and the cost will depend on the number of the size of your farm, right? So uh, let me see here. So. In this first example, let's talk about just um, a one, a one uh, such, such uh, animal, so a pig weighing 200 pounds. So one pig weighs 200 pounds. All right, gains five pounds per day. Um, and costs 45 cents, so $0.45 dollars per day. It's kind of ironic. I was yes, I was yesterday at this Denver uh, stock show. Anybody was there? It was very crazy, absolutely crazy. But anyway, so I kind of um, see lots of pigs, lots of. Uh, animals. I guess it's nice for kids, but um, all right, so the market price um, is 0.65 dollars, so 65 cents per pound, and um, it's falling at one cent per day, per pound per day, right? All right, so if you if your life depends on this, you know, on the revenue that you get or on the profit that you get on this, then uh, the following question might might seem relevant. That is, should you um, sell the animal right right away, and uh, so so to be able to get the most price or the most revenue for whatever you have, or should you wait some some time to um, for the you know to get more weight because it gains a certain amount per day at this but at the same time uh, risking to uh, get a decrease in the revenue because of the price per per uh, market price okay and um, you know, it may not be absolutely clear that there's going to be a balance, balance so there's going to be some trade-off. You're going to have to wait some time, but not too long, uh, to maximize the profit, right? So, so the question is, uh, when should the pig be sold? And, of course, uh, keeping in mind that in order to maximize profit. Okay, so it's kind of a very simple type of, of problem, but still, unless you, you know, get your hands dirty or do something, you won't be able to tell, right? Um, I mean, of course, you could start doing, okay, if I wait a day, what's going to happen? If I wait two days, I mean, you could do that uh, um, the very long way, right? Tabulating. But uh, the, the uh, question is, how can we do it in a, in a more systematic um, fashion? So here's, here's the first step in this method is first is formulate the model okay which if you if you want to think about it we pretty much did it the only thing is uh, at this stage is we'd like to identify what are certain things that we know what are things that we kind of know about this uh, what is that is uncertain. What is what are, what are the assumptions that we have to make to move forward, right? 
So uh, here I'll just say um, so basically I want to have to ask the question and our own interpretation. Okay. So it's it's pretty much with everything, regardless of what uh, what field you are talking about, or it's just you know get, getting your head around this problem and getting comfortable with it. Um, if it's a long you know long descriptive problem, you know try to synthesize, synthesize what is sort of the essential information and you know drop everything that's not essential. So. Um, so pretty much we did the st step one here, right? Step two is to select the modeling approach. Okay. So this actually can be sometimes fairly tricky because um, you know, as I said last time, is you may run out into a situation where you've just never dealt with before, right? And you may not have the mathematics, you know, behind to be appropriate to describe the problem or model, right? So, um, of course, if you kind of can, if you can, uh, can frame the situation in some sort of, for instance, in our optimization type problems, right? So if somebody says, or if you, it's obvious, it's obvious, right? Maximizing profit, it means you have to maximize something. So it's an optimization problem, right? Then you can kind of narrow it down to the tool, to the methods that you know. So anyway, so this, in this case, um, we know that it is an optimization problem. Do we know it's one dimensional or not? Well, that's again part of, uh, interpreting the situation and realizing what is the decision that we have to make, right? The decision we have to make is number of days that we keep that before selling. Um, and pretty much everything else, once you decide on the number of days, everything else is known, right? You, everything else meaning that the weight, the costs, the market price, the revenue, and the cost, right? All right, so in this case, modeling approach would be one dimensional uh, optimization problem, right? Um, the, the, the next step is to actually build the model, okay? Well, the mathematical model. So this obviously is the most important one. And again, everything may seem, may seem sort of trivial, but two weeks from today when you're going to face a problem, right, that you feel lost, this comes really handy, okay? So just kind of breaking it down in this, in this, uh, in this steps. Okay, so, um, so now it gets more serious, okay? Um, remember I said in step one, we've kind of said what should be the things that we're certain about, what are things that are, we're sort of uh, not so certain, so that what are the assumptions, and finally what are the, um, what are the decision, what are the decision variables, right? So we're going to formalize this in a second, um, but based on that we're going to be able to build a model. In other words, knowing we want to find an optimization problem, a function that we need to optimize, is write that function in terms of, in terms of the variables that we have. Okay. Uh, step four, and obviously there's going to be one more. Uh, step four is to solve the model. And um, I want to make it clear here is that computers may help here, 
but that's pretty much the only step where you should really, you know, uh, heavily involve or involve the, uh, you know, some some sort of uh, computational tool. Um, so there there is some prep time. There is some preparation in the previous steps that you want to do before you go to a computer. Okay. Last step is to interpret the results. The results of the model in lay terms. So it's only when you can, remember I said last time, it's only when you can communicate uh, whatever you did to the farmer, that's uh, that's when you can say, well, I've I've accomplished this modeling uh, task. Okay. All right. So I'll go very quickly through this uh, for this problem. So, in the first step for, for this example, okay. So in first step, the goal. is to maximize the profit. So it kind of it helps to start from the from the bottom, right? Of your problem description typically is you know the setting is you know the setup is there um, and you're asked, you know, what's the question? What do you want to accomplish? Okay? So the profit is revenue minus cost. If you're in economics you have some economics background, this is all you do there. Um, pro, uh, revenue minus cost. And this is going to be the, the kind of the most important thing in this in this first step. Is when you kind of wrap around wrap your mind around this model is you wanna um, label, you wanna kind of identify what are the things that on which this profit depends, right? So, what are the variables on which the uh, the, the the profit function depends? Well, for this example, as I said, let me just call T because that's natural um, time left before selling. In days, okay, as I said, that if you if if somebody says, I mean, it doesn't give you an option of keeping it longer or shorter. It just says, you know, from now, you know, in five days, you sell it, right? And assuming everything else is sort of uh, is correct, in other words, the assumptions hold, everything else um, that was listed in that in that initial um, description of the problem are correct, then you will know what the profit will be, right? Okay. So, from that point of view, there is only one variable that on which this model depends, right? So we're gonna um, we're gonna stay with this for now. But now there are there are uh, things that we like to call parameters. And think about them as these are the things that are not so certain, right? But that to move forward, you have to make some sort of uh, choice of their value. So you assume some values or you assume you know, some parameters, uh, the parameters to have certain values, and then you, you keep them fixed. So for instance, C, a uh, little, yeah, I call little C is cost to raise um, the pig per, per day. Right? And, um, and the assumed value is 45 cents, right? 
So that's what I mean by we make this as an assumption. Uh, and there, there are other things like what's another parameter? Can somebody tell me? Uh, the growth, the growth of the, uh, the the weight at which the the growth rate at which the rate at which the the, the weight is growing, right? Um, so the growth rate of the pre. So let's uh, let's call it a little g. So that's going to be the growth rate of the pig per day, and that is assumed to be five pounds. Okay. Uh, what else did I hear? The original is, is, is not really assumed, it's not, right? So that's not uncertain at all. It's just given. So there will be there will be in a list in a separate list that I'm gonna call it to be the constants. Okay? Uh, but there was another value that was the price drop per pound per day. So price drop per pound, market price, right? And that was um, 0 0.01. Okay? And as I said, there's going to be things that are certain and um, I don't even bother giving them uh, giving them uh, uh, names so I'm just gonna call the weight uh, at present time is 200 pounds and um, market price at present time What was it? 65 cents per pound. All right, so so this, again, um, you, you will say, well, what's the difference between these valleys and these valleys? Why do we separate them as, as two separate things here? Well, maybe run the model with these numbers right and then somebody comes back to you and says oh no I made a mistake in that assumption it wasn't really 45 cents it was different value right and let's think this is a complicated you know code that takes days to compute which is not but then you have to go and compute uh, everything uh, all together right now so in a way, I would like to kind of, when we build our model, we'd like to build it in such a way that it's kind of, it's, it's uh, friendly to changes in this, in this, in this, in these, val in this, I don't want to call them variables, right? Because they're fixed for each run of the model, right? We run the model with a fixed value, but we'd like to, run, to, to kind of distinguish between this, this set of, of constants and this set of constants, right? I mean, you, you've seen uh, probably, I mean, you've seen, um, I'm not sure in what context you've seen this uh, denomination of parameters versus constants, but um, certainly parameters gives this connotation of, you know, they may actually change, right? And then you would have to figure out what happens uh, if you change those constants, right? Okay, so so uh, step two is is done, right? Is 1D optimization. So in, in this class there's going to be little doubt about what uh, I mean the examples will come with the corresponding uh, kind of optimization approach so we won't have um, to think about too much about how to use it but uh, of course step three is the most important one so 
so let's let's do it here. So build a model, right? Okay. So it's not too hard because the profit is the revenue minus cost. Okay, and now the revenue is going to be uh, fairly simple. Is is the number of I mean is the number of pounds times the price per pound, right? So let me call this price per pound times the number of times the weight, right? That's the revenue minus, and the cost is. Well, cost per pound times the weight. Uh, hold on a second. No, no, that's not true. The, the the cost is not given per pound, right? The cost is given per day. Thank you. So, so it's just going to be price uh, cost per day times the number of days, right? All right, so um, it's not too hard to uh, do this computation. So the price is 0 0.65 minus 0 0.01t. And notice that I'm not using the parameter values, but I'm just, uh, excuse me, the names. I'm just using the values of the parameters times the weight. It's 200 plus 5t. That's each day is 5 more. So t is in days. Did I, did I say that? So, t days, okay, minus the cost per day, what was, what was it, um, 0.45, and the number of days is t, okay, so that's it, okay, so, a few things here is you see this is a quadratic function in t, with not so nice coefficients, right? But clearly, so this is quadratic. So this will have a maximum, right? Because quadratic and the leading coefficient is negative, so it's going to be a parabola upside down. So, uh, so kind of you know checking that you know we're building a model that will. Um, be reasonable, you know, when we uh, get a conclusion. Of course, if you came up with some sort of model where it was obvious that it would never be achieved, or or some sort, it would always be achieved at the beginning, right? Then maybe maybe there's something, you know, to double check. Maybe the assumptions are not right, and so, something like that, right? Okay. Um, one more word to, to uh, of caution I, I would like to point out is. Um, if you and your colleague are, are basically solving the same, I mean, modeling the same uh, object, right, and the same problem, if you start with a different kind of variables or different, if you call things differently, then when you build a model, the model will look different, right? Not not in not in essential ways, but it will be somewhat different, right? So the comparison becomes difficult if you if you go with, with if you make different you know choices of your variables of your you know because you can make a little bit different choices, uh, not not substantial. But then then pretty much the comparison becomes at the very end. You know, at the very end when you interpret your your results, is it the same? Did you get the same conclusions or not? But in the in the in the in between, it's kind of dependent on what your choice of variables of parameters are, right? So I think one of the homework problems, number one, right? Uh, it's already if you've read that it has an um, auto dealership or something. They they sell cars uh, and they talk about. Um, making a profit per 
per each car that's being sold, right? Sort of a fixed, because we know, we know that's what happens if we sell it like this. Uh, what we don't know is how many cars will be sold, right? In fact, that's going to depend on incentives, you know, other, other you know, market um, um, conditions and, and something like this, right? So the problem basically talks about what if you give rebates, is it going to increase the number of um, cars being sold, right? And so the variables, what will be the variable? Because it's still a one-dimensional one. There's going to be one variable. The number of rebates, for instance, right? You could say the number of rebates of a certain size, right? So if I say $100 rebates or $200 rebates, that would be twice the number of uh, two $100 rebates and something like that, right? Um, so one could make that choice as the variable or one could make just the dollar amount to be the variable, right? Well, you can imagine, I mean, it, it will just look a little bit different not, it won't be dramatically different, right? But it will be somewhat um, different function that that needs to be maximized or minimized. All right. So let's finish this up because um, get to uh, some more interesting stuff here. So, so uh, the model says to maximize p as a function of t, because now you see it's as a function of t, right? Uh, subject to, I would say there's no, not a real constraint, but it's just saying, you know, we want to maximize it in the future. We don't want to maximize it in the past. So we want t to be positive. Okay. So, all right. So that being said, uh, what is the, Step four, that is, solve the model. Well, just have to take the derivative, set equal to zero, find the maximum of the vertex of that, right? And you can already see that it kind of becomes to be ugly if you do it by hand, right? And not only that, but as I said, if then you have to change that 0 0.01, that is the market price drop that's assumed to be one cent per day, right? What if you have to put 0 0.02 or something, right? Then if you had it done by hand, now you have to redo by hand different numbers. Pretty ugly, right? So that's where you need some sort of uh, computer program to do it. Um, so, there's one thing that um, may, may be a little bit um, not clear why it's useful, but at this point is when you get to a computer program, you'd like to have some sort of standardized you know, names for the variables, for the functions. So x is pretty standard for a, for a name of a variable. Uh, so we're just going to write our code in terms of x as the, being the variable. So uh, x is going to stand for the time, right, uh, in days. And f of x is going to be the profit, right? So profit when um, when the pig is sold after x days okay so the function that needs to be maximized or, or, or optimized is is simply 200 um, 0 0.65 minus 0 0.01 tx excuse me 200 plus 5x minus 0.5x, okay? And now you are go to your computer, and let's see if I have the codes here. So I posted 
I showed you last time. This is the code. Copy. Uh, select all, copy, paste in your um, editor, right? So you're creating a new called M file, right? Now, this is a whole file that talks about many things. So let's say you, well, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna copy the whole thing and uh, so. First time when I run it, I have to save it. Remember, I so let's call it pig one. Somehow my keyboard doesn't like when I type on it. Type on it. Any idea why? Um, P. Okay. No, I just want to type something. No, no, it's, it's start typing again. I think it's thinking that you have the same pig file already. No, no, no. It's um, it's like it happened before, like in the beginning of the class. I think there's something running in the background. I'm trying to get rid of. I think this thing might be exit. Hmm, huh, this is very interesting. I'll try this. No, this is going to be very slow, so let me see. No, it does the same thing. I cannot even type something. Let's see. What? No, it's not a MATLAB. It's just whatever. Whatever. I, if I if I open a browser and I want to type something. suspect there is something that sorry about this um, there's something that I installed but is the studio Very interesting. So, okay, now it seems to take it. Okay, so let's try it now. See, this is. I'm just going to override this. Okay. Okay. So, let me organize this a little bit better. So, I have. Remember, I can. Ooh, okay. So I'm I'm running it already. The whole thing, which I shouldn't have done. Okay. So, so this code, as I said, just starts with. It's organized in cells. So every time I put a double percentage, is going to uh, define the new cell. So I'm running. The first cell just says, well. Uh, it clears all the previous figures, 
and it defines x, right? So remember, it's not t, so it's x. Then uh, I use y instead of f, but I define the function and I plot it. So I see that I see this. All right, and notice that it took a little bit of time, um, and I'm going to put it here. So it's going to. I use a big font so you can guys see, but. Um, so we, we plotted this function. It took a little bit of time because it's symbolic, right? And MATLAB is not the best uh, at symbolic computations, but it does the job. Um, what's the next thing is, the next thing is create, it's, it, it takes the derivative of that function, right? And you can display it if you want, right? And you can see it. It's linear, so it was quadratic, and now it's a linear function, right? <coughs> and the next step is solve it. And I'm sorry to uh, it goes to the next cell. So, so this is what I solved. Now I didn't see the solution, right? But the first time you write the code, you want to see the solution because there may be more than one solution, right? Like we did last time, some may be complex. So, so again, this is kind of the uh, the code as as it at its best, right? After it was all run, so it's so this this code is ready to be published and to be displayed as a, as a report. But it, you know, as you develop the code, is gonna is gonna take some steps, some experimentation, uh, and then I just want to display this in in a numerical format, right? So that's what double means. So I see it, it's number eight. You can see it on the picture. Number eight is, is where you have the max. And all you have to do is find the profit uh, by plugging in. And the command to plug in is uh, oh, I'm, I'm not displaying it. <laughs> all right, I should display it if you. Okay, but again, you can just every time you go to the command line, command window, you just say you know type the name. It just calls the value. Okay. All right. Now, obviously, this code is not really uh, friendly at at modifying uh, any of these parameters, right? So you can say, okay, now uh, let's see what's the next thing is to kind of perturb these. And say maybe it's not 0.1 cents. I mean, maybe it's not one cent per day that the market price drops. In fact, you never, you don't know, right? It's a, it's a future thing. You, it's it's uncertain, right? This was just an assumption. But you could say, okay, I'm I'm going to change this value to 0.2, right? And then see what happens. But then you have to run the whole thing. And that was already bad, right? So the change from 0.1 to 0.2 was kind of too dramatic, right? Uh, but anyway, so that's what happens. Looks like the minimum occurs, so you should sell it right away, right? If the price drops, if, if the uh, forecast is the price is going to drop at that rate, you know, it's better off to just sell it immediately, right? So it's it's kind of a it's helpful, but it's not perfect. I mean, it's not a great great way of of doing things. So um, so instead of that, but anyway. So the the next thing we're going to be doing is so we're we're right here, right? So oh, actually, I didn't plot this. So let's plot this. So let's finish this. Um, so we can go and tell to our farmer. So I would say this is kind of the end. Is plot, you know, you plot the the profit function and you plot the maximum that you found. I mean, it's just a way of plotting. It doesn't. It's just a way of way of plotting, right? So hold on, kind of keeps the same figure, and you plot on top of it. Okay. So, and and you plot. Uh, the maximum point. 
Now notice we use plot rather than easy plot. Um, I didn't talk about the command plot. Easy plot is for plotting symbolic things. Okay. Plot is actually to plot is for plotting numerical things. So everything that's this is a, just a point, right? A point with these two coordinates, and then this this is an attribute of that plot. So this is says a red a red circle, red red circle, right? Uh, you can so you can kind of beautify this quite quite a lot. Um, that's that's a nice thing about MATLAB. Uh, so that your graphical kind of result can look, you know, professional grade if you want if you spend enough time. All right. So that's sort of the end and. That's so step four, right? And um, I'm not going to attempt to copy anything. But uh, so using MATLAB, we get that x max is eight days, and um, f of x max is 133.2 dollars, right? Something like that, okay? All right, so now comes the issue of what if those assumptions are not accurate, right? So we talked about what's called sensitivity analysis. And it's a it's a very very important uh, uh, method or, or or piece of the of the of the math modeling. It basically says pick a uh, a parameter parameter in the model say R. R was uh, the market price, uh, market price drop rate. Yep. We said it's 0 0.01 per day. Uh, that was the assumed value. But take that as a parameter and perform what's called a sensitivity analysis to that parameter. So, so the question is, how sensitive is the conclusion of our model, of our modeling, modeling uh, process to this parameter? So whenever we talk about sensitivity analysis, we talk about sensitivity to some parameter. Okay, so meaning that it's going to be very sensitive to a, to a parameter if if what if by changing the parameter just a little bit the conclusion is going to be dramatically different, right? Or it's going to be not sensitive, not very sensitive if changing the value parameter. By some, by a little bit, won't change the value of the, of the, uh, of the conclusion, right? Yes. We're talking about one dimensional. One dimensional. If I change multiple variables, then it becomes variables or parameters. Parameters. If I change multiple parameters. If you, if you, if you have several parameters, like we do have in this problem. Um, we still kind of focus on one at a time. We focus on one parameter at a time. The reason for that is, in the end, you'll have to make an assumption on those things. Okay, and we're gonna, uh, depending on how sensitive the model is to each individual parameter, we're gonna be more careful when we make assumptions on the parameters to which sense uh, this, this model is more sensitive. Right? The ones uh, for which the model is not so sensitive. We're going to care less. I mean, we're going to be less careful about making the assumption, right? So, what's the least sensitive 
that that a, that a, a parameter can that, that a model can be through a parameter. No if there's no change, right? In which case, it would absolutely matter. In, would, wouldn't matter, right? What the parameter is chosen to be, but that's that's rare, right? But a lot of the times, is there's a bunch of the parameters that are sensitive. To, uh, the model is sensitive to those parameters, and there's a bunch where it's not so sensitive, right? So. In running the model, we're going we're gonna to be more careful in picking the, the parameters where the model is more sensitive to. Okay. So how do we quantify this, how sensitive it is? Well, um, this is actually not the only way. So we're going to talk about sensitivity you know, maybe a month later. And we're going to mean slightly different. But that is in quantifying that sensitivity. right? But uh, one way to kind of identify how sensitive it is is to introduce um, the so-called sensitivity to this parameter. Uh, sensitivity, well, sensitivity, OK? So, and it's going to be denoted like this. It's going to be denoted by. So, um, to the parameter, parameter in question. So it's just going to be a number, right? So the number is going to be, let's say, we're we're going to have r is the uh, parameter, and x max is the uh, the conclusion is the number of days. That's our conclusion, right? So that's the that's the um, the conclusion of the model is figuring out what what is the number of days to be, you know, optimal, right? So then we're going to use what's called uh, S of x max and R. I don't know. You want to put semicolon, or just comma, doesn't matter, right? This is going to be a number that's going to uh, um, uh, quantify that sensitivity. So maybe let me just write it down. And explain a little bit. Explain. So <coughs> all right, so now I cannot write, it looks like. X max all right hopefully one that we're going to have a better tablet on the market um, so what have I done here I just I just I just defined a weird formula right um, where what is this well this is just the derivative of X max with respect to R right but I don't know what I mean. I didn't. So what is what is x max as a function of r? Well, I said that if you change that 0 0.01 to some other value, it's going to give you possibly a new x max, right? So that dependence is this function. Now, we'd have to figure out an, ex an explicit e dependence in order to take the derivative, right? So we're going to use a computer for that if we can. Uh, then I'm multiplied by this is multiplied by the reciprocal of x max over r. So where does this come from? This comes from. So the idea is, is s is a relative change. It's a ratio of relative changes. So is the relative change. Of x max that is obtained when a certain relative change in the parameter is be, is made. So, relative change is the is the is the change you're making divided by the value that you started with. So, for instance, if r is 0 0.01, we said x max is eight, right? <clears throat> uh, 
And now I want to make a 10% relative change in this value. So 10% relative change corresponds to what? Well, 10% of it is, 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 is 0 0.0001. So I can add or I can subtract that, right? Or you agree with that? So this changing that value, I mean, now it becomes you know questionable. Is I mean, this, this was one cent, so now it's one point one cents. But you know, think about it in uh, relative terms. So um, right, let's say the drop happens uh, at this rate or at this rate. Then you run the model, and you're going to get some values, right? And the question is, what's going to be the x max then? And what's going to be the x max then? OK, well, we can run the model like this. It won't be uh, the best way to do it, but let me just show you. So I put 0 .0, uh, 0 0.011, and I run this. Now it's good always, if you can, to clear things. Let me just, OK, so you see x max shifted to be 5.45, so five days, right? So the drop is, is faster by 10% causes the number of days to shift, to, to decrease, right? From 8 to 5.45, OK? So, and do you remember that value? And let's do 0 0.09. Run it again. I wasn't very careful when I started, but again, when you run this again, this is not a good way to do it, but you want to make sure that you, uh, you don't use the values that were, were used in the previous run. So it's best to start by clearing everything. But anyway, so it looks like 11 is, sounds right. So if, if the drop was actually slower by 10% than 1 cent per day, then uh, it's better to keep three more days, right? So it's better to keep three more days, or about three more days, or about three, three fewer days, right? When you have a 10% change in, the, in that value of the parameter. So what's three in eight? Because eight was the number of days to be kept, right? The optimal number of days. Um, so this is 5.45, and this was 3.11. So what what is about the, the relative change here? Well, three and eight is whatever three and eight is, right? Oh yeah, thank you. Um, so the relative change is. I'm going to use the power of MATLAB, 0 0.375, right? Now, it's, a, it's about that much, right? So that's, that's point, uh, sorry, so that's 37% relative change. OK? So what is S going to be in, in this? Well, S is the ratio between these two relative changes. So it's 37 in 10, so it's 3.7, right? It's about 3.7. Now, the number 3.7 in its own is not accurate because, you know, the 10% the 10 relative change is actually quite large, right? When you make an assumption, you want to uh, try, you know, smaller, maybe 1%. If you do 1% and you redo this computation, it's going to be probably going to be different, right? So in fact, our sensitivity is going to be the limit of those, uh, the limiting value of, the, of that process. By taking the relative change in, in R smaller and smaller, right? Then the ratio is going to become what? It's going to become exactly this derivative.
times r over x, right? Okay? Because delta x over delta r becomes dx dr, and r over x becomes that, right? Okay, so that's, that's where this formula comes from. And again, this is not the only way to, to define a sensitivity, right? It's just, a, it's just a number to quantify it. If this number is very small, it means it's insensitive, right? If it's very large, if a 10% causes a 50% change, right? That's significant, right? If a 10% 10, 10 relative, it depends on what 10% means in terms of the, the parameter, right? The price. Is that parameter able to change the, by 10% or, or, I mean, what is, uh, what is the range in which that parameter can change? And then you can tell what's the uh, effect on the model, okay? So, with, with MATLAB, we can actually uh, do this sensitivity uh, as follows. So, you have to hold the x variable as being your uh, as being a symbolic variable, right? But you have to introduce another variable, say so call it r, and I plug it in here, right? It's fairly easy, just copy and paste, replace 0 0.01 with r. And now you do the same thing, but every, every time you do things, uh, there's going to be a dependence on r, right? For instance, when you take the derivative, you have to specify that it's derivative with respect to x and not with r, okay? You'll get an error if you get just derivative of y, because it's going to ask with respect to what? Okay? Actually, no, I take it back. Um, if, you, if, you, if you don't put x here, I think MATLAB is going to assume that it's always x. So the rule is go to the back of the alphabet, and that's the priority, right? So if but but to be to be very uh, very uh, explicit, you want to say it's derivative of y with respect to x, right? So let's see what that comes up to. And you, you see it here, okay? And I, I did it already. I, I solved it, right? Again, you have to say with respect to what you're you're solving, right? So you solve with respect to x, and you see the answer is now a function that depends on r. So the maximum, the, the optimal x is a function of r, right? Well, perfect, nice and, and explicit. So now you can do it even by hand, take the derivative. But why do it by hand? Well, we like, would like to uh, use the same code to, uh, to solve it. I mean, not to solve, but to find the sensitivity, right? So I do this in two steps. So I think this is not really necessary, but I'm just displaying a few of these times, optimal times, for various values of r. So here are the values of r that I take. This is in the middle, right? And then I take 10% 10, 10 relative change to the other side, and so 20% here, right? 20% relative change. Now, notice the syntax here. What I do is I, s I have x. The notation becomes uh, kind of dependent on on the the, the person the, you know uh, writing the code. But if I call x max r, this depends on r, right? This is just a name, right? Which is this function. Then in this expression, I replace r with these values, right? And you see, I do it all at once. So I take if I have what's this is called an, uh, an array of values. Right? A list of values. Then it's going to substitute and, and it's going to compute those values. So let's do this here. And then I display the r values and the x values. Remember, I call x values this. So you can see, right? Much better than running it five times, right? Okay. Um, and of course, this is not really necessary for the computation of the sensitivity that as we have it, but uh, it's, it's just, well, it doesn't cost too much to uh, plot these things so you can see. So what do you see? Uh, you see for, 
for each r, well, for, for these values of r, for these five values of r, I plot the values of x. x max. Okay, the maximum, the, the optimal values. And, uh, and what do you see? You don't really see them as in a, in a line, right? Why should, why should they be in the line? There's no reason to expect that anything looks like linear, right? In fact, you saw the, the function was not linear in R. Um, so now when we take the derivative, you know, that derivative at this point, because we want to take the derivative at the point where we want to test that, that assumption, point zero 0,1, is that sensitive around that assumption or not. So when you take the derivative, it's not going to be exactly, right, 3.7 or 37 on one side and 37 on the other side. 37% on one side, 37 on the other side, right? That's why you have a little bit of variation there. Uh, right, so is it this one already? I think I already did this one. Yeah, okay. So we did this and it actually computed. So I differentiate x max with respect to r, and then I multiply by that because so this 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 thing comes up because you have that definition of the relative change sensitivity in terms of relative changes. Later on, we, we may not we may use something that's not relative changes, just exact changes. So delta x over delta r or dx dr. But here you have that term extra, uh, and then you evaluate this value, and here's what you get negative point, point 0.5. So it wasn't 3.7, right? 3.7 was just eyeballing when I said 3 goes on either way between, instead of 8, it's 11 or 5. But it wasn't really 11 or 5. So in that limiting, as the relative change in R goes to 0, you get negative 0.35. So the important thing is negative says what? It's, it's decreasing, right? So with increasing the value of the parameter, the conclusion, I mean, the, the value, you know, that time, optimal time is decreasing, right? Make sense? Should make sense, right? So the value, 3.5, as I said, is, depending on the situation, it says, in this case, it's, it would say it's relevant, right? Again, if it's possible for the price to drop or to change by 10%, then the number of days is going to change by 30%, right? Which makes a, reason, uh, a huge... Uh, okay. And uh, let's see, I think I, I run that again. Oh, and um, I have also a sensitivity to growth rate, which was 5 pounds, it seemed to be 5 pounds, right? But now notice that I, I went back to this value to be 0 0.01. So I'm doing sensitivity only to this parameter, g, right? Now we can talk about what happens if you if you start varying things uh, the same uh, at, at simultaneously. But uh, right now, I just do sensitivity to one parameter. Then you do the same thing all over again, uh, and. you will see what? That it's actually now growing and the sensitivity is, I mean this, this value is 3 with respect to G is 3, so it's positive, right? Meaning that if the growth rate is not 5 but 5.5, right? So if the food, if you are able to give food that makes the animal grow faster, right? I know it sounds like, um, especially if you're not a pork eater, uh, then it won't won't be pretty. But um, then it, it makes sense to wait some more time, right? Okay. So this this kind of uh, little things that you can draw um, from this code, right? And I never managed to say here, but. Um, at the, at the bottom here is step five. Interpret in words. In fact, 
it, it wouldn't be wrong to say, do the step five after you've performed sensitivity. Because, right, when you, when you have to go and, you know, uh, tell your results to somebody that has no clue about, right, uh, what you did, uh, it may not make, you know, his or her very next question, if you say, okay, keep it eight days is, well, but who knows, you know, what's the market price going to do in the next eight days, right? Or, um, or who knows that, you know, the, the, the animal is going to grow at that rate, you know, or any of the other. What about the cost? You said the cost per day is whatever it was, 45 cents, right? What if the cost of the food supply, you know, uh, is going to change? Something like that, yeah. What if the pig has a maximum weight? That too. So, so that brings up uh, another question of robustness of this uh, of this model is well this model besides the fact that it assumes certain values for the mo for the growth right it also assumes that the pig would grow at this at the you know constant linear increase right the the the, the, the weight would increase constant you know at a linear increase but in reality it's not happening right. So the question is, what happens if, I mean, you know for sure that the pig is going to have some sort of nonlinear um, behavior of the growth. Uh, what's the best way to do? Well, probably is uh, do a rough assumption on the linear growth for a few days, right? See how many days uh, is, is reasonable for you to reevaluate the whole model, right? So you could... You could kind of go on a, you know, on an assumption, say, okay, it's going to grow linearly for the next five days, right? Then in five days, you reevaluate the weight, you reevaluate the the growth rate, right? And you predict, you know, a few more days. Now, in the end, the 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 end of this uh, modeling uh, exercise is what you will get. A somewhat accurate optimal value, but you may never get. Like I mean, nobody will say, "Well, you got the absolute best deal, or the best profit you could ever possibly do." Right? So this will never actually achieve because there are so many uncertainties. Right? So, but it will be better than nothing. Right? In fact, for somebody that has no kind of um, tools except guessing, right? This might, it might, might seem invaluable. I mean, it might seem like this is the best that they happen in, in their lives, uh, you know, if, it, if they can see in the future. So use this as predictive tools, but, you know, with some, uh, some cautionary tales. Um, please, I mean, look at the problems. As I said, you, you have till uh, Friday to to hand it in, but uh, I'd hope that you can start working on them. Um, if you feel lost, try to look at those five steps. Okay, interpret them in your minds. All right, and we'll see you on Wednesday.